morning, around the theme of embracing change, I realized there are so many ways of, uh, of addressing this topic and so many really exciting uh, ways. My mind was uh, constantly jogging. So right now, I want to present you just another way. And uh, when uh, we say embracing change, immediately these three words come to mind. Curiosity, learning, and action because it means you have to let go of fear. And uh, as soon as you let go of fear, curiosity can come in and allow you to understand what you see that you didn't expect to learn from it. As, so as soon as you learn something, there's no going back. And we are in a constant state of becoming. You can, we are all the time meeting people, new information, knowledge, and once you know it, uh, you cannot ignore it. And so it allows you to uh, always go forward. And uh, your learning impacts your action. And the feedback you get from your action informs a better thinking. So um, we have many ways of knowing. And uh, as many ways of knowing as we know people, stories, experiences that we have. And people are storied people. We uh, heard this very eloquently presented all, all morning. And we are constantly negotiating our ideas with others. And here, I invite you to think about who are your agents of change who live in your mind. Here, I have a collection of people who have uh, influenced me a lot in understanding how to welcome change and to turn it into an opportunity to really let go of this fear. So I have a collage here of people who actually I worked with because having the experience of working with people is extremely important. It allows you to internalize your actions. And uh, with, this, uh, uh, with these people, I learned how important it is to be aware that you are always in charge of constructing your own knowledge. It, uh, it showed me how to learn, actually, how to think always very big. Because if you do not have a big picture, it always uh, uh, slows you down in building the local action that you have. If you're changing the context of your work and give it the larger context it could have, it allows you to embed all the important ingredients in the very small project that is starting so that it has a chance to grow. With uh, Gloriana Davenport, who's this incredible filmmaker and storyteller, I learned to listen, to suspend judgment, to actually give the gift of being present. And when you do that, it's incredible how much happens. It creates trust. It creates real exchange. And this is the only platform that we can build from. I also learned a lot from many of them, but I can't tell uh, the story for each. It will be too long. Here you probably recognize Father Mesro Paramyan, who's a very big figure in the Armenian culture. And over the 15 years I've known uh, Father Mesrop and I've had the chance to work with him, I was always fascinated at how skilled he is at uh, bringing together excellence and freedom. Excellence which is very, very different from elitism. Because elitism is a, is a granted privilege to you. You don't have to work far, f hard for it. Excellence always, always comes with extremely hard work and always pushing the borders of your own learning. But allowing to, uh, to build environments where you can really encourage people to go uh, to, uh, as far as they can while you're preserving their freedom to think differently is very difficult exercise. And it is this juxtaposition that oftentimes gives uh, birth to creativity. So I would like to go to a quote from Edith Ackerman who I think is capturing very well what all these people are doing. And all of you that I heard this morning, all the people I meet all the time, learning is less about acquiring 
information and transmitting existing ideas or values that, than it is about collectively designing and a world in which it is worth living. And uh, I wanted to say here that we are constantly living in conversations, in our internal conversations. This is why I invite you to uh, understand who is uh, inhabiting your mindscape, and also conversations with reality. So we, uh, we want to impact the world with our good experience, ideas, uh, theories of how we can make the world a better place, sometimes individually, most of the time, uh, together with a few people or organizations. Learning is never an isolated process. We are always with other people. And for organizations, I want to introduce you to the Lewis Foundation. And I think that I among the organization, it's a new one in the landscape, that can actually be a good model for many countries. Because nowadays, if we think of the world with all of its fluid borders, there isn't a nation in the world that does not have a diaspora. And it's not necessarily a forced diaspora, because we are curious about the world. We want to get to know each other. We want to be in touch with new ideas and to create. So uh, the Lewis Foundation is a model for how you can bring a nation and its diaspora to create a positive impact in the country that has the ripple effect of also benefiting the world. It was created in 2009 by President of Armenia, Serge Sarkisyan, and the Prime Minister, Tigran Sarkisyan. And uh, it actually has, uh, I think, the particular combination of really putting learning at work. We are looking at our scholars as thinkers who go into action. And uh, here, it's all based on the constructionist learning approach. I'm giving you a bit of a technical term, but what it means is that we learn by doing and not by being told. And Papert, who's the, the father of this uh, philosophy and uh, an MIT professor, actually puts it more eloquently than me when he says, People build their own knowledge through a progressive internalization of actions. What he means by that is that as much as it is important to externalize your ideas, your, your feelings, it is also important to internalize your actions, to learn from what you do. This happens especially feliciously in a context where the learner is consciously engaged in constructing a public entity whether it is a sandcastle on the beach or a theory of the universe. So with this as a foundation, uh, our students who uh, are studying in the world's top 10 universities come every year and from year one of, uh, of their study, they come every summer in Armenia prepared. Their job is to try and represent what they learned that was so important moving in themselves uh, into a project that they bring to Armenia. But this project, they will have to rethink it with the local community that they are working with. So in the summer, in the villages where we work, and there are about 10 around the, the country, you see uh, arriving this group of 20 people. That's actually a pretty incredible group because they are extremely focused and they also look to connect with the community, with the local organizations. We like to think of it as a, a smart stream initiative because we really bring a lot of organizations, a lot of people in a very focused way over the period of the summer to get things done. So uh, the importance uh, here is to uh, set a shared vision, and uh, we uh, engage in designing activities that build this exchange and understanding and hearing and seeing one another to building projects. Because we are so many of us working now, not only the Louis students, but the community, the local uh, existing organization, it looks more like an intervention. 
But this actually informs us on how we want to, uh, to build the future of our actions. And uh, I'm going to give you only one example of what is an activity, what is a project, because uh, it will be too long to go all over, uh, over all of them. This summer only, uh, our students actually created over uh, 45 activities and 35 projects. This is one of them, uh, an activity, football. Very simple. But in everything we do, whether it's sports, music, we can always invite scientific learning. So here, we even gave it a name, Footballometrics. And uh, we used it as a pretext to learn how to go from theor theoretical thinking into action. So students learned how to program and how to think collectively uh, to search what are the measures of a standard football field and after designing it on the on the computer and programming it they actually went into the field and they started to uh, to prepare the field we run into a, prob a problem because there were some draining pipes crossing the field so they had to do some engineering and reroute the pipes and uh, in the end of course they came together to play and it was also an opportunity to have an exchange with villages that were nearby. The next project uh, is uh, a project we did in Ozun. Ozun is uh, really this an incredibly uh, beautiful village uh, that seems to be suspended in the sky because it's on a very high plateau with an incredible ecosystem. So while our students were uh, engaged in uh, um, thinking with the students on, you know, how important it is to uh, preserve our, our ecosystem. We also realize that the nature can give a lot and can uh, bring a lot of income to the, to the village because it had all these natural herbs that uh, grow in quantity, enormous quantity around them, and that was not tapped into. Previously, there was this uh, French organization, a non-profit called g 2 that represents Rhône-Alpes and a lot of many other uh, big French organizations that were in the village trying to, uh, to show villagers how this can be a profitable income for them. So our students decided they're going to teach entrepreneurship. We have with us the young entrepreneurs, uh, Levon and Sergei, who are 15 and 16 year old, who gathered their friends. And along with our students, they, they uh, discovered what it means to do, uh, to do uh, collective work, to do uh, branding, packaging, and uh, through the logo, what kind of history they wanted to communicate to the world about their village, which is a very ancient, uh, you know, has a very strong uh, culture of um, Catholicos being buried there and uh, has one of the most gorgeous churches uh, uh, that is listed in a UNESCO uh, book. And they used the logo inspired by the church on this uh, A4 paper. So you can also see how inventive they were at a cost-efficient packaging, which has the virtues of the tea printed in the back, a be beautiful logo on the front, the herbal tea uh, that is natural and uh, very good for your health. And after preparing these packages, they presented it uh, to tourists in front of the church. And to their surprise, within an hour, they had sold everything. So suddenly they understood what all these words that we were introducing them to were actually a whole world, design, branding, marketing, distribution. So they started to also think of a festival that will happen regularly so that it will give an opportunity to present the products that they are now designing. We actually were very strong at emphasizing that while they are here to help their families generate a new source of income, they have to stay in school because knowledge is the true wealth. And if uh, they understood just a little bit about each of these domains, each of them are an art in themselves. There is the art of designing, there is the art of managing, etc. 
So I want to talk about the ripple effect of learning. We never learn only just one thing, but three things. Whatever we wanted to acquire as a knowledge, the way we learned it, and inevitably, when it impacts us very deeply, we want to share it. So by sharing it, you're really taking somebody else in this forward thinking and acting. And uh, this works for everybody involved, including our own students, who once they, they were ready to share their acquired knowledge, they realize that when they are all focused working together, they can really impact the local community positively. In this case of Ozun, our French partner, Jai de Zia, already has a client who's ready to buy, buy five tons of tea from Ozun every month. So you can imagine. <laughs> so if we imagine 10 wonderful learners uh, very receptive to all the learnings that we send around the world through our Louis students, and that it impacts the community, and this community, the world, because now the world is going to taste the, the tea of Ozun, we, I let you imagine the rest. We need also to show change. And um, actually, sorry, I want to come to this ripple effect. After working in the summer in the villages, our students come to Yerevan, and through our partner, the IBE Foundation, they teach what they are passionate about. And uh, here is, uh, we are back into this uh, formal teaching, but now because they are informed of the reality of Armenia, the examples that they, they choose to illustrate what they are teaching is directly inspired from their everyday life, so it's particularly meaningful and particularly efficient. And uh, I want to say that two hours after posting the list of courses offered by the Louis students, we had 800 high schoolers registered. And this was open to all the high schoolers in Armenia. So we want to continue this because there is really uh, an incredibly avid and curious population. So we want to show change. How, how do we measure it? It's really hard. So, in the world, we know the monetary currency, and uh, we see more and more growing the not only financial philanthropy, but also intellectual philanthropy, which means you give your time and your best know-how, and you actually make things happen. So, we decided to create a currency, and our students create the Louis Dram. It's a one-to-one -one rapport, and depending, if you're in Armenia, if your project is in Armenia, it's a Lusadram. If it's in Europe, it will be a Louis Euro. If it's in the US, it would be a Louis Dollar. And how we calculate it is we calculate the work, the time, vis-à-vis uh, -vis the reality. Does it need three weeks? Does it need three days? Multiplied by the number of people available with knowledge and experience and their network. And we have the Lewis impact, which means that we get the work done, but actually we get much more done because we also learned in the process of how to come together, to think together, and most of all we learned that there isn't anything impossible. If we get together, we get it done. So, now, to continue, producing these wonderful thinkers who come together and invest their knowledge into action, we, uh, we need to, to pay for their scholarships. So we, have, uh, we are starting our campaign next month, which is a Louis Endowment Fund, Education Fund. And we want it to go through crowdfunding. The more people contribute to the Louis Education Fund, the more it will belong to everybody. And this is to open access to the best learning around the centers of excellence in the world. So what this takes me to is we cannot go forward into the future without thinking about our past. And uh, there are things, of course, we want 
to continue and grow and things we want to avoid. Uh, the whole world knows that in 1915, there was a horrific genocide that brought the Armenian nation and people to a halt. The result was that a lot of Armenians were spread around the world and they continued to live, thrive and contribute to the society where they were. And they acquired an incredibly deep knowledge that I think is very useful nowadays. Because nowadays in the connected world, we need to understand one another. We need to understand how cultures come together to build a positive future. And Armenians everywhere were capable of preserving their culture while embracing a new culture, new values, new wealth of knowledge. And I believe that this combination is uh, particularly rich for us when we create this platform now where it's obvious that the, the world needs not only good thinkers but good doers. And together we want to build the 21st century citizen who cares, who has a strong ethical value, who sees each other, who embraces many cultures and together we can create positive change in Armenia and through its ripple effect in the world or wherever you are living, working and thinking. Thank you.